Coming up next on The Voice of Alabama Politics, voting in the wrong district. Also, how did Wes Allen best Jim Ziegler? And will a coin toss decide an election? Dallas, call him in the air. Tails. So much for voter integrity. All this and much, much more coming up next on the V. Welcome to the voice of Alabama politics, where we tackle the tough issues so you have the hard facts. I'm your host, Bill Britt, and I'm joined today by Susan Britt, research guru extraordinaire, and Angie Horn, political campaign genius. <laughs> Not Don't know about that. <laughs> well, I, you know, I told you, if you, you pull that off, you were a genius in my book. And, and you I've it. seen your work. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you know, uh, gosh, this last week has been one of the craziest things I have ever seen in Republican politics. Now, we've seen this in Democrat politics. We've seen this before in Democrat politics. But what's happened is Auburn City Councilman Jay Hovey ran for Senate District 27 against incumbent Republican Tom Watley. Hovey won by one vote, one vote, when it was all said and done. Then it was challenged by Mr. Watley. And so then, Angie, all of a sudden, they found a vote. They found a vote. Al Gop Steering Committee found a vote that was not legal. And they counted it and called the election a tie. Have you ever seen anything like that? I have it, but but let me say what I find very interesting about this whole process and what I think could have had us avoid all of this had the initial hearing just been public. If it had been public, live streamed or allowed people to come, then people with the accurate information would have been able to present that information to the steering committee. Unfortunately, what happened is the steering committee was locked away behind closed doors. There was no public way of knowing what information they were given or not being given. So the fact that these steering committee members were given inaccurate information, there was no way to correct it because no one knew what they were being told. So I think the first error in all of this was that it was held behind closed doors instead of out in the sunshine, which is what the Republican Party is always saying we should do. Do things in public and have transparency. If they had done that last Saturday, we wouldn't be in this position today. Uh, Susan, what happened was uh, Pat Patsy Kenny mm -hmm. from Georgia moved with her husband, David, to Alabama. She went to the DMV to register uh, to get her driver's license and then to register to vote. But she never completed the process. And yet the argument in front of the steering committee was that because she intended to vote, it should count. And they accepted that. Uh, yeah, but, you know, there's. There's a process in Alabama for, you know, finding the validity in a ballot. It's either it's either valid or it's invalid. She was not registered to vote. She did not follow up with the process, sign all the paperwork, et cetera, to move her voter registration to Alabama. So, you know, you can't match a vote with an unregistered voter. Now, uh, and, and what we understand is, Angie, she gave testimony in front of the uh, uh, ALGOP uh, committee and said that her intent was to vote. And it seemed like to make it, it seemed like Aaliyah had somehow not followed through. Now, the truth is she applied for a driver's license. She has, she's here, she's the sight impaired to a degree. And so they said, well, you're gonna have to have a doctor's exam and you have to bring back the paperwork and, and then we can complete the process. Well, somehow in her mind, even though she did not go back, and, and get her driver's license, 
she was somehow registered to vote. Now, I can believe I'm a billionaire, but I can't go to the bank and write checks. So, but she appeared before Al got, and she made the plea that her vote should count. Yeah, and, and what I, you know, I explained it to, to this way to someone yesterday. I said, if I write a check to the power company for my power bill, but I don't sign it, they can't cash it, and my power is going to get cut off. She filled out the registration form, but as my understanding, never signed it. So therefore, she was not a legally registered voter. When she went to the polls, she was able to, ca uh, to cast what's called a provisional ballot. That's what you cast if you get to the polls and, and for some reason your name's not on the list. You can cast a provisional ballot, at which point those ballots are examined later, as they were in this case, to determine whether or not you should have been able to be given a legal ballot. She wasn't. She never registered to vote until two days after the primary election. Um, I feel for her. I, you know, I understand that she thought she was registered to vote, but she did not complete the process. You don't finish the process. You don't get to be a registered voter. Well, you're, 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 because wait, there's one more thing, Bill. Because she did not complete the voter registration process that day, she wasn't deregistered in Georgia. Right, so right, she, right, that's, right. Oh, that's, that's a real big problem right there. Right. Well, I mean, and, and, and Angie's being kinder than I would normally be. I just feel like for a party that has, you know, for the last several years talked about the integrity of the vote, mm -hmm. passed laws all over the country to pass integrity of the vote, they accepted. They did. They accepted the rationale that because she intended to vote, that it should be counted. And that one of the lawyers made that case made the case that her intention was good enough. Well, now, wait a minute. I talked to people on the steering committee, and what they say that they were told was that she had accurately completed the process and that the mistake was on Aaliyah's part. That the mistake. So now that they know that she did not complete the process, the mistake was not on the part of the government, but on the part of the, the person attempting to register, I think that's why you're going you know, that's why things are, are continuing to what, 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 a rehearing. Well, there was a, a statement in the public domain mm -hmm. where uh, a, a, an attorney said that her intention to vote was enough. You're correct. Leah did come forward, Susan, uh, after the hearing was over and go, oh, no, no, no. Yes, they did. But I, and I'm sorry, but I've got to just reiterate the point. Either it's a valid vote or it's not. Her vote is not valid. It doesn't matter her intention. You know, I can uh, intend to climb the mountain over here. I'm not, that, that has nothing to do with whether that vote is valid or not. Yeah, and Aaliyah came forth and clarified it. Her husband, David, who did get his driver's license that day, he, he's, his, he was a valid voter. Mm -hmm. It just, when it came down to it, Jay Hovey won by one vote. But in the America I'm from, one vote is as good as a million. If it, 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 you know, it, it shouldn't make any difference, no, right? It shouldn't make any difference. Either it's a valid vote or it's not. Period. Uh, exactly. we, we, had, we we had a lot of different things come up during this election that, that seemed to be a little squirrely, but we'll, we'll have to pick those up on the 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 next side of the commercial break because there were a lot of districts that just people were voting but not in the right district. But we're gonna have to leave it right there. You're watching the V. The voice of Alabama politics. This summer, the world's roads lead here to Birmingham. The World Games, recognized by the International Olympic Committee, will bring athletes from more than 100 countries here to compete for gold. Tickets are on sale now to see events like flag football, softball, gymnastics, lacrosse, sumo wrestling, martial arts, sport climbing, and more. The World Games will bring the best in international sports here. So join the celebration, Alabama, as we step up, because this is our medal moment. So you got caught speeding. But this time you got more than a ticket. What are you in for? Vehicular homicide. Stop speeding before speeding stops you. Drive safe, Alabama. A message from your Alabama Department of Transportation.
Welcome back to The V, the voice of Alabama politics. Uh, one of the things that came up uh, during, during the hearing at Al Gop was that people from outside of the district were allowed to vote. Now, we, we saw that, Susan, in Etowah County. We did. Uh, also in Lawrence County. In Lawrence County, where when they drew the redistricting lines, somehow, somebody, and nobody takes responsibility no. for this, did not go back and move the voters <coughs> into the district that they were supposed to be in. And in Etowah County, you had House District 28, House District 29, mm -hmm. where folks were voting in those contests and they weren't qualified to vote. That's not where they're supposed to vote. Same thing down in Senate District 27, mm -hmm. uh, where uh, some 90 people that were not in that district any longer still were allowed to vote. I mean, Susan... And the registrars don't take responsibility. The Secretary of State yep. doesn't take responsibility. I mean, how is this just an oops? It's not just an oops. I mean, yeah, maybe a couple of people. But in in uh, District 27, we're talking about 90 people that didn't get moved. I don't have any idea. Etowah County was a complete mess altogether. And, 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 and you know, it was both districts there. So, I mean, I think we need to find some new registrars, apparently, in those particular areas, because if you're not moving, if you're not paying attention to voter rolls and the redistricting, then you're not doing your job. I mean, Angie, in, in district, uh, House District 28, 29, uh, Al Gop couldn't find a remedy for those races, so they stood, even though people voted from outside the district. And, and this is, look, when we talk about free and fair elections... And, and we all believe in that, right? This is a, a clerical error of some type, but somebody should be held responsible for this. But where is it? Absolutely. And I think it, it lies at the top of the Secretary of State. So the Secretary of State's office was aware that the maps they had provided were inaccurate way back in qualifying six or seven months ago because the Secretary of State had provided a map which uh, which made a candidate believe they were in a, a different district than they were in Etowah County. Right. right. When that when that came to light, Al got refunded his his qualifying fee and he was no longer on the ballot. He was ironically one of the people that got the wrong ballot in Etowah County. So the Secretary of State's office was well aware that they had had transmitted uh, you know, mistaken information to Etowah County months and months before the ballots were ever distributed. So with me, this goes to the top and that that goes to the Secretary of State. I mean, come on, in Lawrence County, the guy won twice, and now they're telling him because of the problems with the district, he, he's going to have to fund the next race. I mean, it looks like this guy may have to run for office three times. I mean, it's come ridiculous. on. I mean, right. we, we, and you can't can blame it on the boards of registrars when you see it happening county after county after county. Right, right, you right, saw right. it happening way back in qualifying. You know, it, this, is, this is a problem with a, a, a systematic problem within the Office of the Secretary of State. And it is up to the Secretary of State to provide accurate information and the resources to the members of the boards of registrars to ensure that these ballots are distributed properly. And they just didn't do it this time. Well, I, I have always praised John Merrill for the job he's done. This, this obviously uh, is, is, is what we would call in the military a snafu. Uh, not that I served in the military, but I was, my dad did, so I learned that word early on. But I want to talk about how in the world did, did Wes Allen beat Jim Ziegler? I mean, going into this thing, everybody knew who Jim Ziegler was. Nobody knew who Wes Allen was. And then all of a sudden, on, a, on, 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 on runoff night, it's like we're looking in, and, and, and you, you won. He won. How'd you do it? Decidedly. So, first of all, we had an amazing candidate. Wes Allen, uh, you know, worked tirelessly for the last year and a half, put literally tens of thousands of miles on his car with retail politics and met and made friends with people all over the state. That combined with his colleagues that really worked to make sure that people knew who he was in each one of their districts. So by the time we got to the runoff, we had people in every county who knew Wes, who had met Wes, who wanted Wes to win. So we had a very, very strong grassroots foundation. Probably the biggest grassroots network of any race this cycle was with the West Allen campaign. We also had very unique commercials where it was just West Allen straight to camera talking about his qualifications and making a logical, reasonable argument on why he was most qualified to be Secretary of State. 
Wow. So that foundation with, with him making the pitch along with the grassroots, it, it just served up to, to make a really good election night. Well, it, it was congratulations both to you uh, and, and, and Mr. Allen. I, I was, Susan, uh, very pleased that Jim Ziegler uh, put out a press release. It was very gracious in mm -hmm. losing. He did. He did. Uh, sometimes we, we think of Jim as being less than gracious, but he showed himself no, he, to be a gentleman and and I and I, and, yes, and did, and did a great job did. there. I want to move on to a, a troubling <clears throat> story that we reported on before. Uh, APR reported on it. We we tagged onto that. But Sabrina Martin, she she won the Democratic nomination to be uh, one of the Montgomery County Family Court judges. Mm -hmm. Uh, APR did a breaking story on her investigation that showed that she had lost six of her children. Angie had had her children taken away from her because of uh, corporal punishment in excessive. the home, excessive corporal punishment in the home. Since then, 32 family court lawyers in Montgomery have called uh, for a deeper investigation into Ms. Martin, and not only by the state, but by the bar, or the party, but by the bar. So I think that Chris England and the Democrat Party are going to find themselves in a very similar situation to the, what the Republican Party has found themselves in this week. They're going to have a very tough decision to make. But I would encourage the Democratic Party to learn from the mistakes of the Republican Party this week and to do so in a very transparent manner, to do so publicly that people see that they are actually taking steps to fix this. Um, I, I think the question is, how did it get this far, right? And so I I hope and encourage the Democratic Party to handle this, but to handle this, you know, in the light of day and to, to correct what's happened. I mean, Susan, uh, uh, this is a blight uh, in the face, but it was not difficult to find these court documents no. on Ms. Martin. It wasn't difficult to find the court documents. And then when you matched them with her statement of economic interest, where she claimed that she had no children, right. um, that's a big boo-boo. I mean, you, you've perjured yourself there. Uh, so I think that the bar is also going to be looking at Mrs. Martin as well, from my, from my understanding. Yeah, and to say, she, I mean, our understanding is you have to fill that out and sign an oath. Yes, you And do. she signed that oath, but did had children. She had adult six, children. Uh, six yeah. children, yes. Uh, anyway. Not all of them adults. All right. We're going to leave it right there. You're watching The V, the voice of Alabama politics. We'll be right back. You'll never guess what 400,000 people in the U.S. were using when they crashed their cars last year. No, not this. This. Distracted driving will kill you. Drive safe, Alabama. A message from your Alabama Department of Transportation. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread and kiss them all soundly and put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. Welcome back to The V, the voice of Alabama politics. I mean, the news just keeps getting weirder, okay? Because, all right, Taylor Harden Secure Medical Facility is a, 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 the only place in Alabama where we take incarcerated people with mental health problems, serious mental health problems, uh, for evaluation and treatment. And some of them are housed there it is a is a very necessary resource because we have so many people in prison with mental health issues but 
we, APR, Alabama Political Reporter, reported this week, and we've reported these stories before, that at Taylor, Taylor Harden is so understaffed that on the weekends, Susan, uh, people that work in accounting, people that work in, in, in maybe more custodial capacities, uh, uh, you know, people that work in other fields mm -hmm. are actually there working on the weekends to look after the patients. This is very disturbing to me because while they may just be people that have mental health issues, they also have health issues. Now, if you've got some, say, you've got a custodian checking people's blood pressure and temperature and all that, they're not trained to see any kind of warning signs that might be ahead of a stroke or a heart attack. Uh, what are they going to do if they have a, a, a stabbing victim there? There's, there? These people are not trained to handle that sort of trauma. Uh, this, this, this is very, very, very disturbing. The, uh, Angie, the Alabama uh, Department of Mental Health has said that this is a bit over-exaggerated. They said that they, they were understaffed, but not to this level. However, I, you know, I, I've been reporting for more than a few years, and these sources on this story are solid, or APR would have never reported them. And it's more than one sort. But this, to me... We have a responsibility to these people as a state, and you know the state as well as anybody. Uh, this is a tough situation, but I don't understand why the staffing is so difficult. Why can't we hire people there? Well, well let me preface this by saying this. People at Taylor Harden are there because they have lost their rights to freedom, whether that's, that's right. due to commitment for mental health or due to a, a criminal conviction. Right. These right. people have lost their rights to freedom because they are a a harm to or a, a threat to harm themselves or someone else right, so right. not only is this a threat to these people inside that facility but should one of them walk away is a threat to the people who live and work around that facility. Right, right. now the question as to why it's so tough to get people to work it's tough to get people to work anywhere these days yeah, yeah. i mean you know from mcdonald's to taylor harden to you know high profile positions and I, I think a lot of that just goes back to the days of getting free money during COVID, getting free money after that. America's work ethic and Alabama's work ethic are really on the sharp decline. And if we don't find a way to turn that around in all industries, we're going to see problems like this in a lot of essential services. Well, and, and you're right. This is a public safety issue. But I will uh, sound like a broken record here. When people are incarcerated, uh, they, they lose their freedom, as you rightfully said. What they do not lose is their humanity. So we, we do have a, a, a responsibility to these people as humans. Correct. You know, we, we wouldn't, I don't think any of us would, would, would throw dogs in a pen and not look after them if they were sick. Right. You know, right. so we can't do that to human beings. But I don't know, kind of crazy. I don't have any answers to this one. I just think more often the state is not not working hard not enough, paying attention. paying attention to get this not done. Paying attention, and we have to take care of these people one way or another. It's and just, and it's, it's a public it's safety ultimate. issue. It's yes. a moral issue. Right. It's just I want to get to something where I'm. You know, I I rarely eat my words because they don't taste as well. Going, going in as they did coming out. Genius. But uh, the other week, a couple of weeks ago, I, I, I complained, or we all complained about, uh, Angie didn't, the Medical Cannabis Commission, and because they had said that they thought they would have everything ready by fall of this year, and then they announced it will be fall of mm -hmm. 2023. Uh, they called me, and I spoke with uh, Commissioner McMillan, who I, I think is a wonderful man, a very public servant, and his staff, and Susan, they explained, and you were on part of the call, mm -hmm. they explained that the legislature handed them this, this that they had to implement, and it's taken longer to implement than anyone would have anticipated. Well, the legislation itself is over 100 pages, but what, and that sounds very simplified, because, but it's not. Uh, most of this are caveats and restrictions and very limiting factors that's causing them a problem and actually being able to get the systems in place to do this, never mind the fact that they didn't fund the commission for the first year. So I mean, yeah. you know, it's making a tough process for them to get the databases together, 
and for, for you know who's growing it and where it's delivered and who's purchasing it and all that. So it's taken a lot of time that they didn't anticipate. Angie, you're very familiar with this legislation and how it came to be, and and what's your take on this? I think I would rather them see do, see them do it right than mm -hmm. do it fast. Right, right, right. Um, you know, it took us years in Alabama to get this legislation passed, and. I don't want to see anything rushed because that's how mistakes happen. And that's how, you know, this whole thing that was very carefully crafted and very, very, a lot of safeguards and things like that uh, would fall away. So I, I applaud Commissioner McMillan and his team for taking the time to make sure they're doing it absolutely right and not as fast as they can. That's the right way to do it, not only for Alabama, but for the other states that are looking to us to see the best way to do this. I think also it might help the commission because they're getting a lot of emails and calls from people that are sick, from people who have sick children. They don't understand why it's taking so long. If they would start to try to get the word out and explain yeah. why this is taking so long and kind of calm the nerves and, of the patients. And that's one of the things that I, I spoke with Commissioner McMillan about is, you know, let us in the media help tell the story so that people are informed. I mean, the story that was reported was not wrong. But it did, at least the part of it that I took away, was it did not give me everything I needed to know mm -hmm. to make a good decision. One of the things, whether you're a drinker or not, the, the state had promised we would have alcohol delivery. Uh, we criticized them about that a couple of weeks ago. There was still lack of delivery in much of the state. But somehow this past week, Instacart, Susan, is now oh. delivering alcohol All in Alabama. All of a sudden, Jew Willikers. Yeah, so they found a distributor, Angie. <laughs> they did. You know, I've been having Instacart deliver groceries to my house for several years now, and I live, you know, in a small town in the Wiregrass, so yeah. Yeah. Uh, Instacart seems like a, a good way to handle this. And, I know, uh, and I'm glad to see that, that, that the guys over at the ABC board found Instacart. All right. <laughs> they right. Get their ice cream delivered, too. Yeah, I know so, Kathy Bunch is going to be happy about that. And that was your idea, Susan. <laughs> well, we're going to have to leave it right there. You've been watching The V, the voice of Alabama politics. You watch us because we watch them.